Um, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, first of all, I would like to uh, thank the Shaka Khan organizers to uh, provide such an amazing opportunity. Uh, actually, I, I cannot imagine that one day I will have a chance to uh, make a public presentation with wearing uh, slippers, short trousers, and such kind of uh, uh, shirts. That's uh, very awesome. Okay, let's begin. Uh, my name is Cloud, and I'm working with uh, Palo Alto Networks and, uh, on the antivirus uh, research and the development. Uh, that's all. I think others are not so important. So let's begin. Uh, the topic is about iOS malware. So some people may think that seriously, there are iOS malware, really? But the situation is that over the past three years, this is a whole list of the new iOS, new iOS malware families being discovered. And let's take a look at the red one. All red, all red ones are the malware that ever affected non-jailbroken devices. And all italic ones are those malware that even entered Apple's official Apple Store. So I think we could say from this list that this is a problem now. Uh, also consider, I, I believe that most of us should only use non-jailbroken devices in the daily work in life. Um, how many people jailbroken your phone or rooted your Android devices? How many people here? Only a few, I think three or four people. Do not, okay? <laughs> anyway, the problem is that even you don't jailbroken your phone, it's still risky. Uh, this is what we are talking. We were talking about today. We were talking about how uh, non-jailbroken iOS malware were produced massively, and then how to how how they were distributed, and then how they did evil things, and lost how they made profit. But before that, I would like to uh, avoid some confusion. First of all, is uh, risky or malicious. Uh, in most of cases, when we talk about malware, it means that it had malicious behaviors. But today, lots of uh, iOS families that you cannot say it's, it's so bad or so malicious because of the restriction of the system. The system is still pretty secure. secure. So you can only say it's risky. That's, that's what, uh, so today we are using the word malware, but the risk well, the potential unwanted application and such are well all included. The second is that the in the wild or POC, there are really many, many excellent uh, security researchers, especially academia researchers on the provable concept of iOS malware in the past years. But today we are more talking about the real, the actual attacks. And then for example, when we're talking about Windows or Android or Linux malware, that usually means that those malware were uh, spread or executed by some automatic way without users' knowledge. Users even do not know it. But on iOS, we will see that more families uh, do, do need users to do some interactions with the devices, for example, to install it to click it, to import something. We will see many examples of that way. And then lots of uh, iOS malware do origin from, from or targeted some regions in the world, for example, China. So uh, some people asked me before that why do we really need to care about it if it's just a regional problem? The answer is, first of all, some of the families still affect all users around the world. For example, the Xcode Ghost affected, I think, more than 100 of countries around the world. Another answer is that some technicals that they developed, that they used, were more and more adopted by other attacks around the world. For example, uh, about 
about two years ago, I, I found the well look that used the, the enterprise certificate to uh, attract non-jailbroken devices. And in about, uh, about half a year later, there were two. One is by hacking team, another one is, uh, name is one-click fraud. Those two, all you all learn from it and use the same way to uh, attack non jailbroken. So the last, uh, uh, the last concept is uh, design flow of code vulnerability. There are tons of uh, very awesome vulnerabilities that have been discovered year by year, which could uh, lead to like, uh, information leaking or, or used for jailbreaking. Uh, that's what we are not talking about today. We are talking about, we will. Uh, talk about some few design flaws. Uh, you can also say it's vulnerability, but it's not some, uh, it's not some awesome reversing things, but some, it's actually made by some design problems. Okay, let's begin. The first is uh, how to uh, produce a malware. Of course, for non-jailbroken. So, of course, you could, you could uh, develop single malware just the on demand. But another problem is that how could you massively produce them? The first, the, the first technical is the, to trojanize a uh, compiler. This is not a new idea. This is actually an idea that presented in uh, I think 30 years ago by 30, or 30 years ago by Ken Thompson in his uh, lecture of Get the Turning Award. So Ken Thompson trojanized or said back, make a backdoor in the C language compiler so that each uh, network server compiled by that trojanized compiler will accept a backdoor the username and password. That one is pretty complex uh, that you need many techniques of uh, compiling theory. But later in about 2009, there was a Malware, actual in the world, malware family been discovered that it will infect the Delphi compiler. And this one successfully attacked many uh, computers. I, I remember thousands, at least, thousands of developers' computers. So later, Stuxnet, Stuxnet, although it's not directly chosen as a compiler, but it's, it also learned from the idea that it uh, attacked the true chain of uh, PLC devices that's used in the industrial control system. And everyone know how Stuxnet successful to uh, deliver the, the goal. So in lower days, on Apple's platforms, how easy could we infect uh, the Xcode, Xcode, the only compiler for iOS app? The answer is single line, just one single line. This file, this uh, ld.xc spec file, is uh, actually a text file. And it includes many of uh, uh, configurations used for linking. So there is a default value of the linking parameters. And you could add a force load with a path to uh, an object file. After doing this one single line change, Everything in this object file, every code inside it, will be compa will be linked into your app. So you could using all the tricks to uh, automatically launch this code during runtime. This is actually the trick used by the famous Xcode ghost. This Trojan, at first, it, uh, the, uh, the attacker Trojanized about seven versions of Xcode from uh, from about, uh, I remember it's 6.0 to uh, uh, 7.0 beta 2. And the attack, the attack existed in uh, six months without being discovered. But actually, the, uh, the impact continued till today. Uh, this morning, I also saw some new samples that were infected by this Trojan as the compiler. And then, the attacker uploaded this Xcode installer into some public cloud storage and file sharing services. And then he did some successful SEO. And so he posted some uh, blogs 
as well as some post on the developer's form, say that, okay, I provided a central downloading method for Xcode, and you could download it much faster than from Apple officially. And these posts are so popular that when I discovered this malware, I searched in Google by Xcode download or Xcode uh, in, in English and in Chinese and found in the first page of Google's results, except for Apple's official one in the first. And then the, uh, the next uh, 19 entries are all Trojanized one. Yeah, that's a super successful SEO. And then after the, uh, the reason that developer want to uh, download it from in this way is that first of all, Apple's CDN for downloading, especially for developer resources downloading, has some problem in some regions. Also, developers usually disable the gatekeeper because of uh, some other developer, development tools, popular tools. Uh, some of them do not send by any certificate, so developers usually disable it. I disable it too. So it successfully infected developers my computers, and then at last it infected 7,000 apps in Apple Store and with uh, hundreds of millions of users around the world. Uh, the, the worst case is that this malware is actually vulnerable, that is C2 traffic is through HTTP, so you can hijack it. And through hijack the commands, you could reach an API named Open URL, which is pretty dangerous, that you could through this API and fake the commands to uh, install arbitrary app by phishing, or you can even display some messages or, or display a dialogue ask a user to import anything. So uh, till now, I have no idea how many still alive yet, but when this uh, family is alive, then this vulnerability may lead to a serious problem. Anyway, it's, it only discovered after half year of it being made by some reason that some developers recognize abnormal traffic of their app, of their own app. And also, uh, this, this is an interesting story, right? Uh, this malware, uh, in finally infected a super popular social network app that even the author himself not expected. So that app brings hundreds of millions of users which uh, actually DOS the C2 server which hosted in Amazon's AWS. Amazon of course could accept it so huge significant traffic. But the problem is that that guy's uh, credit card <laughs> being out of money because of so many traffic. So the, the C2 server down and, uh, and then all the connection will, will wait like uh, one to two seconds, which make a huge delay, uh, huge delay of the apps launching. And finally, that social network gens found the problem. So uh, Apple's suggestion to uh, prevent this problem is that to uh, enable the gatekeeper and check the Xcode's integrity. Uh, I, I verified Apple's method. Uh, the method, of course, effective. The problem is that every time I check it, it spent about two and a half minutes. Uh, I'm thinking that how many developers will, will always perform this checking every time you compile a single program by like two or three minutes. But the problem is that you do not necessarily need you to download a Trojanized compiler, Xcode installer. Actually, you can use any Mac OS X uh, adware or spyware to locally infect that single line of configuration file. Everything's done. And also, you can even detect whether it's, it's uh, in a procedure of uh, compiling and then infect it in time, in real time. Also, note that the tool chain or set in, for a developer in his computer, there is not owning a single compiler. You may use all other tools to uh, improve your like code quality or 
or, pro or speed up your development or, or do something. For example, you can trojanize a Git, right? So those are further problems that nobody could provide or provided an effective way to resolve the problem. Uh, another problem is that uh, third party code is well, also maybe risky. These are four uh, examples of uh, risky third party SDKs that have been discovered in the past years. So they will collect like contact information, the device ID, uh, they will uh, perform some remotely controlled, take your pictures, record your audios, etc. And you can see the affected like thousands of apps in Apple Store. Uh, this is another result that from academia uh, research from this year's Auckland conference. You can see that about uh, in the official Apple Store, about 3% of apps included a potentially harmful library from third party. And um, lots of them are actually cross-platform that exist in both Android and iOS. And they have a uh, lots of sensitive behaviors. So the first question is that why this SDK has uh, so many sensitive or risky code? I think the answer should be that partly because of uh, they would like to collect users' information to uh, uh, get some money. This is actually an abuse of a user's uh, privacy data. Uh, second question is that why I think the SDK code is, is risk and is a considerable problem. The problem is that Apple do have a very good design sandbox for, Andro uh, for iOS app. But let's think about it. No matter in Android or iOS or other platforms, the app sandbox is designed in the, in the, in the, bundle of, uh, in the boundary of app. It's just a per app. Everything inside the app share the same permission, share the same user, and share the same data. Which means, actually, as a developer, you adopted code from third party, you, you, you even don't know, from third party. And those third party code could theoretically take control of all your data and share all your permission, could do everything. So the problem is that, how could you trust the thing? How to resolve this problem? As a developer, I suggest that only use well-known, trustworthy SDKs, and also it's necessary to uh, perform a code review to us, both source code and the compiled result, the binary code. So uh, another one is repackaging. Repackaging is the main reason that Android uh, malware being so huge number. Uh, it's uh, it's uh, only, I'll say, it's a major way to uh, massively produce Android malware. So now this technique come to uh, iOS platform. So in iOS, you could uh, download some app from Apple Store and decrypt them by some tools, and you add a dynamic library into that app bundle. And then you could patch the main bundle executable uh, by adding a load command of uh, load dylab and then fix uh, the Mac O header. Then you resign the app by your own uh, certificate, personal development certificate, and you could distribute by some ways I'll, I'll talk about later. So uh, this is actually happened on malware. For example, this one, tinyv.b, tiny uh, repackaged every chart. You can, we can see that in the load command, there is a, there is a uh, load library by the executive pass and uh, uh, point to a PNG, which is actually a micro file. And this one has a variant that, that will read the WeChat's uh, uh, data and upload your charting log as well as your password. Okay. Why people install those kind of uh, pirated, repackaged apps or games? There are many reasons. For example, most recently, uh, we know that there is a very popular game that is, uh, what's the name, po Pokemon Go. How many people here play Pokemon Go? Oh, pretty many. Well, so Pokemon Go, there are, there are two uh, requirements. One is that in some regions over the world, uh, Pokemon Go do not provide service. The second is that 
uh, to play it, you, you, you have to go outside and then to capture a monster, right? But the problem is that someone do not want to go outside. Or maybe, for example, if there is a Pikachu in the in White House, what will you do? Walk into White House, say, oh, hello, Obama, I want to capture a monster in your desk, right? So the requirement is that you need to fake the GPS. But if your iPhone is not jailbroken, how to fake the GPS? The way is repack the game and then provided a device lab to provide a fake GPS location to cheat him with the game. That's a requirement. So overall, after you produce the thousands of malware, how to distribute it? The first way and the major way is through the enterprise distribution. So enterprise distribution is used, uh, it's, uh, it's another way bes uh, uh, besides of the Apple Store. It's a way that provided to companies so that you could distribute your own private app to employees without public access and without Apple's review so that nobody knows your internal code. To get a, to enroll into a uh, enterprise distribution program, everything you need to is, uh, is some documents of your company and as well as a uh, little money. And also you can even buy such kind of uh, account or program or certificate from the underground market. Or even you, uh, if, you, if you indeed cannot pay one and a half Bitcoin, you could pay $3 to get a signing as a service. That's, uh, that's uh, not stupid things in the, in the underground. Anyway, this one, this method has a long history being abused by the pirated Apple Store. But then uh, since the well local, it was uh, 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 begin to abuse by the malware. So these are the, these are the list. Uh, after you send your apps through the enterprise certificate, you could distribute it through a protocol named ITMS service. And the only thing you need to do is, is embed this URL into any network traffic, and then the user will be promoted. Uh, well, We'll, we'll see a dialog like this. Ask you whether you want to install which kind of things. Note that everything in this dialog is totally under your control. So you could add many of cheating things like phishing uh, to your user to, to try your best or ask them to install it. And actually, this uh, has already been combined with uh, lots of other or uh, traditional attack method like the traffic hijacking, or uh, it was uh, being used in, in uh, compromised website, et cetera. So uh, pretty powerful method to uh, distribute it. Uh, by the way, this also used for some apps, self-promotion. Uh, for example, uh, when I visited some uh, top rank uh, news website in US, I also saw some similar problems. Uh, so besides of enterprise, there was a program uh, which is free. That is a personal development certificate, which it began to free in about half a year ago. Uh, Apple has restrictions that as a personal developer, you should, this is only for your own taste, so you can only install it in 100 devices. But what unbelievable is that the Zig Helper, this amazing family, even trying to abuse this program. Uh, previously, nobody, nobody thinks this is possible because it, the restriction is no way to bypass. But this one is smart. That it implemented everything in the Xcode to apply the certificate and then use it to generate, a, uh, to pull a validate certificate from Apple server to your iPhone and then it will download from, from the, from the uh, server, from the uh, malware server, C2 server, downloaded, unsigned app, and then send everything in your own devices, in the devices, and then install it in the devices. So <laughs> it's, uh, it's, it's sent per devices and abuse this program. The benefit is that, first of all, it's totally free. And the second is that, Apple cannot, I'll say, this may cause that Apple will 
abound thousands of certificate? I have no idea. But anyway, this happened. So mitigation is that, uh, first of all, if you are install or running a enterprise certificate send apps, Apple will ask you to uh, double confirm it that you trust it or and in the after the iOS 9 you need to even click many times to uh, double confirm it. And also every time get a report of malware, of new discovered malware, Apple will, will recall, uh, revoke the abused enterprise certificate. But the problem is that uh, first of all, if you want to get another one, that's really no cost. And the second is that even Apple re revoked it in the server side, there will still be a catch in the infected devices. So iOS device is no uh, query the uh, revoke the certificate list every day or every hour. Uh, it actually queries in like three to seven days. So it will catch the results. So after you revoke it, um, it will take about three to seven days to be effective in all devices. This is still a window. Uh, Apple also reduced the uh, valid date of personal certificate. But most of the ridiculous one is that I, I think in one month ago, when I pull a new uh, personal certificate from Apple server, and the, the Mac OS X system told me this one is, uh, is ineffective right now. I have no idea why. That's a totally new account, a new certificate. Anyway, the next one is that you could try to uh, let your malware enter the Apple Store. So Apple do has a uh, code waiting, but no details. So nobody know how they do it, statically, dynamically, automatically, or manually. No one knows. But there are pretty many ways. One, the, the, first, the first method is amazing. It's, it's normal that you could ROP yourself. You could exploit yourself. So you, you embedded an ROP vulnerability in your own, uh, so, sorry, it's not ROP vulnerability. ROP is the exploit method, okay. You embedded a vulnerability in your own app, and then you exploit by the, by the network traffic to uh, change the behavior. But this is a theory method. Uh, this other TLA successfully uh, verified the attack to Apple Store. Uh, but I never see this used by real malware before. And the second one is that you could perform code obfuscation. To, uh, this is assumed that Apple will have some uh, expert to perform manually review to your code. And also this could bypass some uh, security guys that uh, also, it could bypass some automatically rules to detect the code. The third one is that you could target specific data. For example, these are examples that, for example, the, the install agent instantly will, uh, it provides functionality like uh, who viewed your Instagram pages. This is a functionality that the Instagram officially not provided, but these apps provided. Uh, actually, you can still search the Apple Store by who cares about, uh, who cares with me, or, or Insta Detector, Insta Analyzer, everything like that. You will still find lots of apps uh, like that. But these, these uh, apps will actually upload the password you imported to the server. Uh, and also, there were some uh, apps that will steal WhatsApp uh, password. Uh, the fourth method to uh, with the to Apple Store is that you could perform checking of the environment of execution. Um, for example, you could determine the geolocation, you could determine the Apple, uh, the, the IP address, you could determine the language of devices. This is assumed that the manually uh, reviewing of the of the uh, Apple's waiting is performed by some people in some location in specific time. So for example, you could provide an app to an Apple Store and uh, uh, disable the normal functionality through network uh, for like two weeks. After two weeks, uh, uh, it passed the code waiting. You could enable it again through network traffic. So for example, this is a malware that during the, uh, if you access it by devices in English or, or uh, visited it, uh, 
outside of the China, you will see it's a English learning app. So I can imagine that Apple's waiting guy uh, listening the good morning, or it's time to wake up, something like that. But actually, if you are access it in, uh, from the IP address in China, you will get a uh, third party Apple Store. Yeah, it's a third party Apple Store client app in official Apple Store. Oh, I can't imagine, I can't say that, okay. Uh, the last one is that actually you could just do it. It's the Apple Store's code waiting is, uh, is far, far away from what we thought. It's not restricted at all. Okay, so for example, this one, actually it's the same one. It contains so many sensitive APIs and so many sensitive strings in the code, in plain text, that we could write pretty many of rules to cover it, to warn it. That's actually how I found it. But it bypassed Apple Store again, again, and again. I really doubt the code waiting do re exist. Okay, so the mitigation is that first of all, you could remove it from Apple Store. Uh, but there is no remote key, which means if you have already been infected, Apple cannot remotely uninstall it to mitigate it. The second problem is that you could theoretically adopt a more restrict code review. But the most, the most recent change is uh, that in a, about a month ago, Apple announced that all apps code review uh, time will reduce the from a week to a day. I can imagine how could they improve the code review in this way. So uh, another way is uh, to uh, uh, through the USB. So uh, at the first, uh, you could use in any USB devices to install malware into your iPhone. Uh, for example, you can, you can use it, uh, you can use a rechargeable power bank to uh, install malware and uh, even activate, uh, even run it. So after that, Apple uh, added the functionality that to uh, ask the computer and the, uh, the phone to verify each other, to authorize each other. So after that, there were well looking as the server, which used this trust relationship that it will infect your laptop at first. And it assumes that your laptop will connect it to your phone, which has already been paired. So after that, under that assumption, it will directly install malware into your phone. This is totally in background. Nobody ever mentioned, uh, ever noticed about it. How to mitigate? There are some technical way. For example, you could ask a user to confirm it every time that you install something through USB cable, but that not happened. That mitigation didn't implement it yet. So the last one is a fair play made in the middle. Don't be afraid about that word. That, that's just the name. And this is actually a DRM mechanism that designed for, at first designed for iPod in about I think it's 15 years ago. That's the first generation of iPod. It's not iPhone. That's used for the music's DRM protection. So the logic is that you purchased the music or app from Apple Store, and then downloaded it to your PC or your Mac. And then you sync the, you install these apps or sync this music from your PC or Mac to your iPhone or iPod. So the sync procedure is that the, the device will send, a, send some data to your phone, uh, to, sorry, to your computer, and t your computer make a response to your phone. Which means, uh, this procedure is used to uh, prove that the computer has really purchased valid music or app from the Apple Store. So Apple has some design that from the, from the iPod, uh, iPod, uh, Design that first of all, uh, it do has restriction that each Apple ID could not band it with uh, at most the five computers, but it do not restrict it how many iPhones or iPod or iPad you could use. So because I think maybe because at first uh, there aren't any 
Apple Store on iPod. So anyway. And the second, the DRM protection is only relevant with the app. It's not relevant with the Apple ID. It's not relevant with the devices. So which means that uh, if I downloaded an app from Apple Store and you downloaded one, those two downloaded copy are exactly the same. They are protected by the same key. Okay. And so Apple's design is that it relies the security of this virtualism, this DRM, relies on, first of all, computer authentication has a maximum limitation. Second, there will be a physical connection between your computer and your iPhone. However, the main in the middle in this way, a tongue will purchase app and then it will transfer the authorization data to victim's PC, which actually do not you purchase it in, uh, before, and then using a victim's PC to install app. Okay, so in the SD server, the attack will submit app to Apple Store, and the attack himself downloaded the app from Apple Store. As well, in the in the same time, the iTunes client will also download an authorization data of this app to a talk uh, server. So a talk will embed this app into the Windows client, which is malicious. And also it will deploy this app's authorization data into the C2 server. So the Windows client will be installed to a victim's PC, and the victim's PC will fetch the authorization code from the, from the C2 server. So now in the victim's PC, it has the app installer. It has the authorized code. That code is propelled for the attack. But due to Apple's design flaw, that authorization code could also be used by victim PC. And then this victim PC performed made in the middle with the iOS devices. So successfully, the app uh, installed into the device. And then, after all, the behavior of this uh, family, so uh, most critical behavior is that it will upload the password you, you input it. Okay, how to mitigate this attack? No way. Actually, this attack was reported to Apple in three years before. Two years later, after two years, the SDC will occur. But till now, there is no any mitigate to this attack. Because the problem is that, for example, you could, after you found the Apple Store app is a, is a malware, I just said, a method is that immediately remove it, right? Just remove it from Apple Store. But in this attack, even you remove the app from Apple Store, since the also code has already been deployed to the C2 server, it will be continually validated it will use the forever. You have no way to, uh, to uh, revoke the also code cause back because of the design. That one is only combined, binding with the embedded app itself. It's irrelevant with the victim's PC. It's irrelevant with the iOS devices. It's irrelevant with the Apple ID. So that's, that's just like deployed a private, uh, distribute a private key that you cannot you cannot uh, stop it to decrypt the public keys data. It's, it's just like that way. So I keep it blank because I don't think there will be some way in current design to resolve the problem. Uh, the last one is abusing MDM. MDM is powerful. You could use it to control devices in many ways. And there were some vulnerabilities being disclosed in past two years. But it will also be abused by, till now, at least the two malware families that abuse the MDM uh, by phishing, of course, cheating some people. Okay, due to the time, let's have a pass it to, uh, to evil. So do something evil. First of all, it's abusing private API. Private API is defined by that it's an API exposed by the SDK or by the system runtime, but it's not documented. Also, so you can also call it undocumented API. So Apple only exposed the pretty safe APIs for 
normal developers. But itself, in the iOS systems per installed apps, it will using some more sensitive APIs, which is private. For example, uh, in this uh, framework, you could see that Apple only documented three APIs to get some basic information. But actually, if you analyze that uh, framework's binary code, you could see that code in the exported samples, there are pretty many of uh, good stuffs or bad stuffs. For example, you could use these APIs to uh, get a list of all installed application, which is uh, disallowed by Apple. So the capability of uh, abusing private API, could you could use it to uh, take pictures, record videos, audios. In some old versions of iOS, you can even use it to receive or send short messages or even make a phone call. So combine it together, you can really do something evil. Um, the mitigation Apple has already adopted is that, um, first of all, uh, some of sensitive resources handling mechanism has been redesigned. For example, the short messages uh, handling uh, currently can only be sent or received by Apple's own app. Uh, secondly, that lots of unnecessary private APIs have already been removed by Apple. And third, and most effectively, that uh, added another layer of, uh, of security protection, that is entitlement. So entitlement is a runtime checking. Uh, so sorry, it's not runtime checking. Entitlement is a code signing certificate-based uh, uh, permission model. Say, uh, say that, uh, for example, if you want to uh, install an app, you need to have an entitlement of the mobile installs, uh, install item. But that one, Apple won't issue to uh, normal developers. So after that, uh, except for the private API, you could do hot patching to yourself. Uh, hot patching is uh, actually uh, the, the codes are self-uploading, uh, self-updating, or codes downloaded and dynamically execution is disallowed by Apple simply for security reason. However, you could bypass it. The bypassing is pretty like the ROP, but it's, it's, it's not so complex like ROP, you, you need to control the return address. But you could adopt a similar method that you're using the script, like JavaScript or Lua script, script language, treat it as data. And then you embedded a uh, like JavaScript engine in your own app to read this script as data, but, but this data will drive your engine to execute the code, right? So Apple cannot disable that. Based on this, there was some very popular hot patching framework, like JS patch or wax patch. These are really popular in the developer community, because developers do have the requirements of uh, perform hot patching. This is because every time you want to update your app in Apple Store, Apple will have to re-wait it, review it. That will be another week. So if you have a critical security issue or, st or stability issue, you will need to wait one week to uh, make your update be listed in Apple Store, and you will be wait like from one day to months for users to install it, to update it, right? But with hot patching, you could immediately effect it. So uh, developers welcome these kind of techniques, but these techniques can also be abused by malware to uh, implement it like remote controlling, uh, sensitive codes hiding, et cetera, uh, which is exactly the the reason why Apple would like to disable it. Uh, also, you could do runtime manipulation. I just uh, said that any code in that, pro in that app could do everything, including read your data, also could manipulate your code, so you could actually do hooking. Uh, I just uh, said the, uh, introduced the example of the uh, Pokemon Go. The Pokemon Go's uh, GPS, uh, 
and uh, GPS proofing. Uh, some of the implementation is just uh, through this way. So you could use it like uh, SiteCrypt, which is popular uh, for jailbroken community, and Captain Hooker, et cetera. Or even you could customize your hooking code to uh, manipulate your app's runtime and change all the behaviors or hook the data. So this is an example. This is Tracer. Uh, previously, people believe this is hacking team. It's actually not. This, this, is, a, uh, this is a company, I think, uh, in US. I, I can remember it. This is a company who produced a commercial spyware for jailbroken devices before. And then after, jail, uh, how, after the hacking team's leaking, it copied some code from hacking team and repackaged it into Facebook, Skype, WhatsApp, Telegram, WeChat, etc. And uh, using an uh, enterprise certificate to affect a uh, non jailbroken phone, it used the mask vulnerability to cover existing um, apps to uh, read their data. And it used the runtime hooking like this to uh, add some more interface to apps own code so that it could intercept uh, your charting history. So there are some design flaws due to the time I'll, I'll, I'll skip this. And uh, make profit, I also skip this because this is not so technical. This is just uh, some observations uh, to the underground market. So if you are interested, you could uh, discuss with me offline. Uh, let's review the approaches that we can see there are lots of ways to produce it, to distribute it. You could do some evil things even in the restriction of the sandbox and you could make profit in some way. So takeaways, first of all, malware, especially iOS malware, is pretty different with traditional malware on Windows or Android platform. It do not to be automatic, it do not be small size or dedicated. It do not need to be general. It do not to be uh, transparent or non-interactive. It could be many of many different forms of ways to perform the attack. The second takeaway is that there are already uh, some practical, although low tech, but still practical and effective way to uh, launch the attack. And some techniques has been mitigated, but some still haven't or have no way. And uh, through this, through research on the approaches and through research on the reasons, the root reasons, I think we could um, uh, find more in the wild later. So there are some security suggestions. The most important, I think, is that do not install app from third party or signed by untrusted certificate. Also, you do need to protect your PC and Mac computer and as well as your network for prevent attack like iOS malware. Uh, thank you, that's all. Uh, sorry about, uh, we have two minutes for, FA, uh, for questions. Any questions? Okay, cool. Thank you again.